What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. First of all, I want to say shout out to the UK and British boxing. In the last year and a half, the Brits, the UK, they have really been making their mark, taking over. They got a lot of great fighters. Scott Quigg, he um, stopped Kiko Martinez in great fashion. Carl Frampton made his USA debut in um, Texas, I believe, last year. Tyson Fury beat Klitschko, who was dominant and hadn't lost in over a decade. You have Anthony Joshua, knockout artist. It's just a lot of great UK action. Uh, Lee Selby, there's a lot of people in the UK, so shout out to the UK, definitely coming up. Now, Charles Martin versus Anthony Joshua was just announced today. A lot of people had a, a feeling this may or may not happen. Some people were actually doubtful that this fight would happen. They they said they were doing the preliminary talks, but you know how that goes in boxing. There's a lot of fights that were talked about, like Yuri Yorkis Gamboa versus Mikey Garcia never coming to fruition. So some people were skeptical. I had faith that this could happen. The reason being is when I talked to Eddie Hearn when he was out here, out this way, I interviewed him and... I think as a promoter, he knew this was before Dillian White, before that particular fight. I think he knows where his fighter is at. He's he's a good promoter. And he basically said in the interview that a fight with Wilder, some people believe that Anthony Joshua could beat Wilder even right now, but the time is not right. Meaning he wants to season his fighter, give him that confidence. And it's the right way. And I was actually shocked when this fight was announced with Charles Martin and Anthony Joshua. I was actually shocked because some people were acting like it's a bad fight. And I'm going to break it down, my thoughts in this particular video. I think this is excellent. And I was appalled, really, to see any people have complaints of this particular fight. It's just in recent memory, I, some of the boxing fans just throw me for a loop. Like They just like they want to complain. I mean, you got two heavyweights, both undefeated. Combined, they have a 92% knockout ratio between the two of them. So they're both pretty much KO artists that haven't really reached that echelon of fighting the best possible names. Now, of course, Anthony Joshua was exciting. He just beat Dillian White. But as boxing fans, you got to be realistic. The fact is, he's like 15-0 and 0 or 16-0, whatever it is. He only has 15 or so fights. And it's not logical for him to immediately fight Tyson Fury, immediately fight Klitschko, immediately fight Deontay Wilder. Not to mention Tyson Fury is supposed to rematch Klitschko due to a rematch clause, and Wilder and Povetkin are likely to fight each other. So for a lot of reason, the negotiation for Wilder Povetkin, from what I heard, is going through smoothly. So that's the mandatory for Wilder, and it looks like that fight may happen in the summer. So for a variety, a plethora of reasons, it's not logical to see either guy, Charles Martin or Anthony Joshua, at this current juncture, fight the top three, you know what I mean, the top dogs, the champion, like Wilder or Tyson Fury or even the Klitschko. Like, let these fighters build up to that. Again, Charles Martin and Anthony Joshua, they're good fighters, but as far as I'm concerned, neither one of them have the best resume. You know what I mean? They're still building. They're still learning on the job as, as pros. So the, to the thing with me is... Some of you guys in the comments section would be absolutely dreadful promoters. Your fighters would have the shortest shelf life because you, you don't manage it. Like, I know people hate when, when this is said, boxing is a business, but you have to be realistic. It, it makes no sense to have Anthony Joshua put him in with Dillian White and then immediately put him in with Deontay Wilder next because your fighter could possibly be ruined if he's in the next in the wrong possible fight. Now, I'm by no means promoting or advocating cherry picking. But again, you can't, this is not cherry picking fighting another champion like Charles Martin. You don't have to immediately go up to the number one and two guys like a Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. It just doesn't make sense. And again, like I said earlier, most likely they have their own fights to fight each other. So it's just a lot of foolishness in the comment section with people acting like they're mad because this fight is happening. This is a good fight as far as I'm concerned. More, They both have more to prove. And I give Charles Martin a lot of credit because he's going to fight in London April 9th at the O2 Arena in London. And he's the champion. So for the champion to go overseas, you know, hopefully they took care of him financially. But to risk it fighting a powerhouse like Anthony Joshua with him giving, the, or giving him the hometown advantage, that shows that Charles Martin, he wants to 
solidify his championship. And a lot of people are basing this off of his co-main event. He was on the Deontay Wilder Spilka card. He fought Glasgow. Now, by no means, I'm not defending the fight. The fight was boring to me. It wasn't a great fight. And it ended in a in a weird, non-traditional way with Glasgow slipping and hurting his knee. But you can't blame Charles Martin for that. It's not his fault that Glasgow blew his knee out. You know what I mean? For, for what it's worth, Charles Martin, I had him winning the fight. Now, I mean, and it was early, so it's not nothing he could have done. You don't know how he would have looked. He might have been able to get a traditional stoppage if it went more rounds, but we didn't get to see that because Glaskov got injured, and it ended in a funky way, but that's that's boxing. It is what it is. You can't blame Charles Martin for that. I don't think he's a shit fighter because he was winning the fight, and then the, his opponent slipped and fell awkwardly and hurt their knee, so... I don't really see what people are complaining about. Like I said, both guys have a lot more to prove as heavyweights. And another thing is, why would we even complain knowing how weak the heavyweight division has been after Lennox Lewis retired? It was really just the Klitschko's. No one could beat them. I'm happy that we're getting some new faces, some new champions, some new knockout artists, and some new blood. Tyson Fury beating Klitschko. That's all good for the sport of boxing. Deontay Wilder is a charismatic character. So, again, I'm not understanding all the complaints, why people are mad at this fight. Some people love the fight. I think it's a good fight because, to me, we still want to see. Like, Anthony Joshua, he had his big step up, avenge an amateur loss to a guy who was coming in with confidence, didn't really fear him, like maybe some of the other Anthony Joshua opponents, had power, had martial arts uh, background as well as boxing background, so he's been fighting for some time, and that was Dillian White. And Anthony Joshua got his bell rung. He got buzzed in the fight. I think it was the second round. He held on tough, weathered the storm, and got the stoppage in the later round. So this is a right step in the right direction and I don't blame Eddie Hearn one bit for taking a fight like this because this is I would say a better fight for his fighter in terms of the progress again I think Anthony Joshua possibly possibly could beat Anthony or excuse me Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder but that's going to come in due time you don't want to just get an Earl Spence Jr. and go from zero to a hundred within one fight to two because you could have a situation like David Price, especially at heavyweight where one punch can change everything. David Price was supposed to be that dude. Then he fought Tony Thompson, got stopped and upset. And David Price having like guts or whatever, he wanted to immediately avenge that. And now his career, he's, he's pretty much considered ruined after Thompson did what he did in the first fight and stopped him again. You know what I'm saying? So I don't blame Eddie Hearn for taking a champion. Some Someone said he's picking low fruit in Charles Martin. I mean, it, it is what it is. There's a lot. Not all the time you're going to have the the biggest names as champions. You know what I mean? Pauli Malignaggi wasn't considered necessarily the toughest welterweight bout over Mayweather and Pacquiao. And he had a belt for a minute. So, you know what I'm saying? If you have, like, Broner and you have the opportunity to face a Pauli Malignaggi for a belt, why wouldn't you take it? You know what I mean? It is what it is. And, again, I don't think the matchup is as bad. I don't think Charles Martin, I think he's better than what the last fight showed because the last fight didn't really show much of anything. That's just me personally. I mean, he's six foot five and he's a southpaw. There's, and out of all the divisions, the heavyweight division has the least amount of southpaws. So just the fact that it's someone around Anthony Joshua's size, and again, Anthony Joshua has a lot to prove at his, he, you know what I mean? He looked a little bit stiff and mechanical in his fight with Dillian White. So I mean, going in against a Southpaw who's 6'5", 250 pounds, big like him, with power, a knockout artist, and a champion, so with confidence, you never know how this is going to turn out. Good fight to me. Let me know what you guys think. Charles Martin versus Anthony Joshua in April. Props to both fighters for taking this fight. I think this is a dangerous fight because someone's old got to go. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.